So, we now know that for future earthquakes, it is impossible currently for us to predict the actual history of the earthquake. If that was possible, we would have actually directly applied those history to our structure and design it. But in the absence of the whole uh, history, uh, all we can do is that we can uh, estimate the peak ground motion parameter which is expected for future earthquake. And that process of estimating is called ha seismic hazard assessment, right? So, as a result of seismic hazard assessment, uh, we can estimate the peak ground ex acceleration experienced as a result of some future hypothetical earthquake, right? So, the hazard map which you see, uh, which give us an information about different PGA values at different sites, those PGA values are for future earthquake. Right? So, we are nowhere close even to predict the actual time history of an earthquake. We only can estimate or forecast the peak number or any ground motion parameter for that future earthquake. So, now that peak number P g a is replaced by spectral acceleration, right? because spectral acceleration uh, is a more meaningful parameter compared to ground acceleration. Spectral acceleration tells us that how the structure is going to shake or experience acceleration as a result of that earthquake. But obviously, P g a is one number, spectral acceleration is not one number, it is dependent on the time period of the structure, it is dependent on the xi value. right? So, therefore, if we want to use spectral acceleration as a ground motion parameter, we have to fix time period. So, there are two standard time periods which are fixed, which can represent uh, our most of the structures and th they are fixed standardized by building codes. And those two time periods are 0 0.2 second and 1 second. It is uh, expected that 0 0.2 second time period is a representative of most low rise buildings or low rise structures. 1 se second is uh, representative of the uh, high rise buildings or you can say mid to high rise buildings. right? So, these two time periods are standardized. Spectral acceleration values at these two time periods are given a specific name, right? but not for past earthquake, they are given for future earthquake. right? So, different building codes obviously, they cannot directly give us the the whole spectrum or whole history of the future earthquake. So, what they do is that they give us the standard equations uh, to, to plot that spectrum for future ground shaking for your site. right? So, they will give us the equations which if you plot them for your site will give you a very smooth spectrum. right? Obviously, they, 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 that equation will result in a very smooth kind of graph and those equations are made the function of not only time period on x axis, which obviously, they should be, but also they are made function of the seismic hazard parameters of the site. right? So, for example, the earlier equations, the older generation of building codes provide us the spectrum, which uses P g a values as an input for your site and time period obviously, you plot them for different time periods. right? So, for sites having high P g a values, your spectrum will be above. For sites having lower P g a values, the shape will be same because the equation is same, but it will be lower. right? So, you plot based on your P g a value, you plot your spectrum right? and then that spectrum now start representing the seismic hazard level at your site. right? So, this is a spectrum which you expect your future earthquake is going to have for which you are designing your structure. Obviously, it is a hypothetical spectrum, because no future earthquake is going to have a spectrum which is very smooth like this. It will always be jaggy, right? but still we use them as an approximate representation of the spectrum of the future earthquake. And the height of that spectrum is dependent on the seismic hazard parameter at your site, which was P g a previously. right? So, if you are in zone 4, your P g a is high, the spectrum which you can plot for your site 
uh, will require that zone information or PGA information to plot. And when you plot that, it will be higher than zone 2 or zone 1 maybe, right. Nowadays, two time periods are fixed as a standard representation of most buildings and spectral acceleration at these two time periods are used as the ground motion parameter and not the PGA value, right. And those two time periods are 0 0.2 second and 1 second. This 0 0.2 second is called as the short period spectral acceleration. Actually, the spectral acceleration value at 0 0.2 second, this is uh, represented by S sub S short period spectral acceleration. It, it is actually the spectral acceleration at a time period of 0 0.2 second, right and 1 second is somewhere here. So, any spectral acceleration value at 1 second is represented as S 1, right. So, nowadays these two numbers S S and S 1 obviously, they will be having the units of acceleration just like P G A, because they are accelerations not the ground acceleration, but the acceleration of the structure acceleration of the single degree of freedom system uh, having these two time periods. So, they are uh, now, used as the hazard parameter, ground motion parameter, right. So, previously you need to know the PGA value of your site. Now, you need to know the S S and S 1 value of your site. So, if you get that from the probabilistic seismic hazard assessment, then you can come to the building code, put these two numbers in the equation of spectrum, plot the spectrum for your site and now this spectrum is representing the seismic hazard expected at your site. If you want to perform the dynamic analysis now, you have to make sure that the ground motions which you are using have the spectrum which is matching with this response spectrum for your site, right. So, everyone is clear with this concept that uh, on the response spectrum, two time periods are fixed. The spectral acceleration corresponding to these two time periods are now used as the ground motion parameter. These two numbers are now used to represent the level of ground shaking, right. So, um, previously P G A or starting point was being used. Now, it the 0.2 second and 1 second spectral acceleration is being used. Now, the last point is that the P S H A process hazard assessment process can be performed for any ground motion parameter right. So, just like you can make the hazard maps for P G A future shaking P G A. Similarly, you can also make the hazard maps for S S and S 1. You can make hazard maps for spectral acceleration values right. So, the ground motion prediction equations which relate the uh, peak ground acceleration and the source to site distance are the same ground motion prediction equations have the versions available for any other uh, shaking ground motion parameter, right. So, the ground motion prediction equation will have a version available to relate S S with R. It will have a version to relate S 1 with R, right. It will even may have a version which relate the MMI value with R. How the MMI value reduce as the source to side distance increase, right. So, which means that ultimately as a result of P S H A, you not only can make the hazard map for P G A, you can also make the hazard map for S A uh, at any time period and two of them are standardized, right. You can make a hazard map for S S spectral acceleration at 0.2 second. You can make a hazard map showing the S 1 values in all the study area, S 1 values hazard map or S S values hazard map, right. So, previously you need to know P G A or zone of your site. Now, you need to know S S and S 1 for your site, because they are more meaningful, they give more direct information about the seismicity level expected at your site for future, right. So, for past earthquake, we can exactly know P G A, because the history is with us. We can exactly know S S and S 1 because the history is with us, we can exactly plot the actual spectrum and pick the spectral acceleration at these two time periods. 
So, for past earthquakes the hazard parameters are exactly known. For future earthquakes they are estimated as a result of PSHA and not only PGA any hazard parameter or any ground motion parameter can be estimated and its map can be made. right? So, nowadays we are more interested in making SS map or S 1 map for our study areas and not PGA maps. right? PGA maps still have applications obviously, uh, it has a more direct meaning that this is how the ground is shaking. right? But for a structural engineer S 1 map should make more sense. right? S 1 map will tell you how the short period buildings are going to shake. S 1 maps will tell you how the intermediate or uh, mid rise buildings are going to shake. As a result of PSHA you can even make a map for spectral acceleration at maybe 2 second. Any other time period you can spectral acceleration corresponding to that you can use it as a hazard parameter. Because the GMPs which are the integral part of PSHA they are available for any hazard parameter. They are even available for PGA, SS, S 1, SA at 3 second, SA at 2 second, SA at any second. right? So, if you want to make a map which tells us the shaking experienced by very tall buildings make a SA at 2 second map or SA at 3 second map. It will tell you that how much acceleration is experienced by high rise buildings at different locations in your study area. right? but two of them two of the time periods are fixed. They, they the seismicity of any site is represented by two numbers S S and S 1 right. And when I say seismicity of a particular site I am talking about the future earthquake right. So, it is not S S and S 1 is not for past earthquakes they are always meant for future earthquake right. So, just check different equations of the response spectrum curve in different building codes they will be the now, nowadays they will be the function of S S and S 1. You know S S and S 1 for your site you can plot that right. For low values you, your curve will be lower high values your curve will be above and once you make that curve for your site that becomes the basis for all seismic analysis procedures which can be performed for any structure at your site. If you perform response spectrum analysis you use that curve. If you perform dynamic analysis, time history analysis, you select the ground motions which have the spectrum which is matching with this curve, right? So that those earthquake uh, are a representative of the future ground shaking at your site, right? So it has many applications. Please go through all of these slides. There are some other spectral parameters which are of uh, less importance, and there are some duration parameters. And at the end there are some list of parameters which cannot be classified under these three headings. right? So, please go through all of them and you must have an idea about what how a particular G ground motion parameter is calculated or what information at least it shows. right? So, maybe you will not be able to manually calculate each parameter, but at least you should know that what information is is contained in that number what are the typical values of that parameter. For example, areas intensity you should know that what it tells at least right? and what is typical range. If I give you one number areas intensity this much you should make a mental picture in your mind I mean how, how much destructive or damage potential that earthquake may be right? with this areas intensity. Just like you have PGA you should make uh, a kind of a kind of a picture in your mind about some other ground motion parameters also right. 